Hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's rocket shop where we continue working on the world's only crude, crowdfunded space rocket Spica. In this episode we will invite you inside our liquid oxygen and ethanol propellant tanks to discuss why and how their design can affect rocket guidance or prevent unwanted consequences. And then we'll talk about making the machines that make machines in our rocket shop. So let's get on with it. All right, so we're here back to the uh, speaker pro propellant tanks and an update on how it's going with them. As you can see, they're quickly becoming much taller than I am, uh, and we're getting there right now. Um, right now we have this uh, rightmost tank here. That one is completed to the point where we just need to weld uh, the second end cap onto the tank, and by then it's actually done. There has been a lot of work going into these tanks, probably also a little more than we anticipated, but we're getting there. And one of the specific features that we do have inside our tanks here are these um, so-called um, anti-slosh baffles or anti-slosh plates. Um, the power, the force available in, let's say, about a ton of propellant, which is sloshing back and forth inside a tank, if that should happen by accident, it's quite obvious that it can severely affect the trajectory of a rocket going up. So we need to keep that, uh, that fluid in the tanks uh, calm so that we don't, get, uh, don't give the uh, guidance system too much of a, of a challenge. So I just uh, brought out one of, the, uh, of these um, anti-slosh plates. Uh, it's a scrap one we have here, but just to show you how it works. I mean, it basically sits in this orientation inside the tank. So if anything slushes up here, it's uh, it, some of the energy is taken out at each level of these uh, slosh plates and we have about 24 of them inside each tank. Now there is also this thing here that we are deformation hardening our tanks. That means that our uh, the diameter of each tank will actually grow I mean considerably. So what do you do with a basically a slosh plate that you've uh, welded to the inside of the tank because you need at least two points one in either side uh, for making for fixing it inside the tank. So I know it's it looks a little rough here but as I mentioned this is a scrap example. This particular cutout we did here uh, means that when the welding is down here and we uh, um, expand the diameter of the tank this gives the slush plate sufficient flexibility to follow along with the diameter increase of the tank itself. So this is just one of the little details that we had to, to figure out uh, to make sure that we don't get any surprises with these tanks. This is one of our other things that we are working uh, frantically on right now. Um, it turned out that the the large diameter pipe cutter, which has also been used for, uh, for welding uh, the speaker tank so far, it was intentionally designed to be a pipe cutter. And what generally happened along the way was that um, our tanks, of course, took on more and more weight. I mean, initially it was a round tube, then an end cap was added, then a lot of slush plates, and then another end cap. And, I mean, these tanks are approximately 175 kilograms when done, so it, they took on more and more weight and eventually we could see that our poor large diameter pipe cutter was actually starting to buckle a bit under the pressure and to such an extent that um, we couldn't really we couldn't really risk going ahead with uh, with doing the final welding uh, on the uh, on the tank using that setup so we had to take a step back and make a quick decision on how to fix this uh, situation but also on a let's uh, more permanent scale so Thinking it out, then the, um, the long seam welder, which is right here behind me, has an enormously strong frame. I mean, it's nearly impossible to break or overload. Secondly, we figured out that um, even though it's, it's uh, good for, for long seam welding, all the stuff that does the long seam welding is detachable. So there's just a basic frame left when we take all the long seam welding stuff off. And then actually it leaves a very nice frame for um, having another functionality, which is this circumferential welding that we've been doing on the large diameter pipe cutter. 
So right now we are actually coming along really well. I mean, John here is uh, already working on the uh, gantry section, which will hold the uh, the head that will spin the tank very slowly while we're welding. And then the far section over here, it's just, uh, I mean, this one was a mock-up when I was here last time. Now it's some heavy duty steel that will work as the uh, resting point for the tank while it's being slowly, well, barbecue rolled. Yeah, a setback. A short one though, and uh, the equipment we get out of it is even better than the stuff we had before. So, maybe a good idea anyway. Our tanks will get even better using this setup. That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.